you know that Joseph Smith prophesied about the American Civil War almost three decades before it actually happened? <gasps> well, did you? Christmas 1832. Joseph and Emma are living above the Whitney store with their two children. Joseph had just turned 27 two days earlier and is reading the newspaper while Emma rocks their two-month-old baby son. Their toddler, Julia, plays quietly nearby. Dropping the newspaper, Joseph worries about many of the headlines. South Carolina is fighting against the U.S. government. There's a breakout of cholera in New York, and arguments about slavery are increasing. Discussing these problems with his wife leads them to wonder if these are the prophesied signs of the times. That night, Joseph prays and asks the Lord about these problems, and the Lord answers with section 87. The prophecy foretells the southern states will be divided against the northern states, that slaves will rise up against their masters, and that what will be known as the Civil War will start in South Carolina. Again, this is 28 years before it happened. On April 12, 1861, a war begins exactly as prophesied when Confederate troops fire on Fort Sumter, South Carolina. Unfortunately, Joseph never lived to see this prophecy fulfilled and didn't include it in the first few printings of the Doctrine and Covenants. However, in 1851, Elder Franklin D. Richards was putting a book together in England called The Pearl of Great Price and felt prompted to include this prophecy. It was the first time this revelation was officially published a full 10 years before the Civil War began. Later, this prophecy was moved from the Pearl of Great Price to its current place in the Doctrine and Covenants. Now, many of Joseph's early revelations taught the importance of keeping good records, which is one reason we have so many ward clerks today. But since he had very little formal education, Joseph always used a clerk or scribe to write the revelations, records, translations, and histories. However, following a prompting to keep a record written in his own hand, Joseph goes downstairs and purchases a small journal from Newell's store. Back in his room, he begins recording his history, and after writing the first paragraph, reads it out loud. Joseph Smith Jr.'s record book bought for, to note, all the minute circumstances that comes under my observation. Huh, wow, that didn't sound right. And since pencils with erasers weren't invented yet, he literally crosses it all out and tries again. His second attempt is still pretty rough. In fact, you can actually see this journal for yourself in the Joseph Smith papers online. So, while Joseph may have struggled at writing his own thoughts, when he spoke for the Lord, his writing flowed smoothly. And the stark difference between his own writing and the Civil War prophecy written only days before witnesses that he was a prophet and seer who truly spoke for and translated with the gift and power of God. And Joseph really used this power while working on the inspired translation of the Bible. For example, in section 86, the Lord gave him an interpretation of the parable of the wheat and the tares. Wait, what's a tare? Well, a tare is a weed that looks just like a blade of wheat until it's time to harvest. But unlike the nutritious, life-giving wheat, it's actually poisonous. Yikes! The parable teaches, pluck not up the tares while the blade is yet tender lest you destroy the wheat also. Yeah, Satan's mixed everything up so much that sometimes we can't tell the good guys from the bad. But we've all been asked to pitch in and help gather Israel, just like the farmers in the parable who gather the wheat. Howdy! But it's really hard hmm. for us farmers to tell what or who is actually wheat. So the Lord asks us to just get out there, open our mouths, and share the gospel with everyone. And how exactly do we do this? We gather Israel by loving and inviting and trying not to judge nor condemn. Mm -hmm. Even if some people look scary or different, mm -hmm. our job is to love all of God's children and leave the ultimate wheat and tare sorting out to Him. Now, Joseph often received prophecies, like the one about the Civil War, inspired answers, like about the wheat and the tares, and revelations like the upcoming Section 88, all through this still small voice. Huh? Yep, most of the Lord's profound teaching moments come from stillness rather than noise. And while we may wish that the Spirit would shout to alert us that a message is coming through, the Lord asks us to learn to hear a still small voice. 
Wow, that sure ain't easy in today's world of constant noise and distraction. So, like the prophet, we have to purposely create moments of quiet to hear this voice by turning off the noise and taking time to listen. Now, while Section 87 focused a lot on war, Section 88 will concentrate on peace. It takes a lot to make these videos, so to keep Line Upon Line free for everyone, consider donating through Patreon. The link's in the description below. And thanks for watching. This episode is packed with info, so you might want to watch it again to make sure you didn't miss anything, including the hilarious jokes. If you feel this video has helped you on your path towards truth and Christian discipleship, please subscribe and share. Most importantly, go read the scriptures for yourself.